today we are going to do another Christmas gnome. This is going to be a Christmas tree gnome and this is Christmas in July so we're doing a few videos. I'm not sure if I'll have any other Christmas gnome videos or Christmas in July videos coming up. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did this and I'll have the free PDF for the pattern for the hat. Um, this part of the tree and then the circles on the bottom. So let me get my supplies and let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to go over the supplies you're going to need. You're going to need some uh, faux fur. I'm going to use white. You're going to need something to cover your styrofoam cone. So you're going to need a cone. This one is um, 3.7 inches by 8.9. So it's a pretty tall one. So it's almost 9 inches tall. You can use a shorter one and I'll go over that. So the material, you're going to need some kind of material to cover the main part of the cone like this one because I don't go all the way up with these um, column branches or whatever of the tree. So I did this one in a red and white striped and I might have gotten this at Hobby Lobby I believe. And these two I'm going to use this one today and we're going to do gold or silver is going to be our tree. So we're going to do this. I think it's going to be very pretty. I'm going to go over the pattern with you also. So I'm going to use this one, and I believe I got these at Walmart last year. Or you can buy, if you find a sweater uh, or something um, at a thrift store, you can use that also. I almost was going to use this for, to cover with my silver, um, and this was a sweater also. So I decided I found this. I wanted something with some white and red. So I'm going to do this snowflake one here. Then you're going to need, um, you can use, if you don't want to use the glitter foam, you can use um, felt. And that's how I did um, my first one. This one I did a year ago. So I did this one and I did it with felt and I only had three layers. So it was a smaller cone. So you can use felt. You're just going to probably need, and I did a, the dark and the medium green. So I would get like four or five squares of each one. Um, if you're going to do a bigger one, you're going to probably need a few more. I always get extra just so that I know I have enough in case I make a mistake. And when you look at, and you're going to need some white, um, depends on the color you're going to go for your tree. I'm going to use white for the mittens. But when you look at your, um, and I don't know if these were both the same brand because they're the, the tag is off of them, but you can see what this one looks like compared to this one. So this one I don't like. Um, I would not, and you guys can't see it. So, um, it's probably really hard. It's really, um, uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to see. It's It's got those like spots on it and stuff. So it's pretty see-through and spotty where this one is not. Let me see if I can, because in this one is a little thicker too. So you can kind of see the difference in the texture of them. So I don't know where I got this one, but I, yeah, I don't like it at all. So, because you can kind of see the spots and stuff in there compared to this one. Okay. Um, or you want it, if you want to do one in red, whatever color you want to do it in, I'm going to do it in silver. And I did this one in a green. I thought it turned out cute. And I just didn't decorate the branches. I'm going to call them branches. Um, the circles, I hadn't decorated it yet. I wanted to see if I could get some more of the tinsel pom-poms. So if you're going to do the 
um, foam, <laughs> I would get at least three pieces. Depends on how tall, if you're going to make a big one, I would get at least three. Because you're going to get all five of your branches on one piece, but then you're going to need the for the hat. Okay, and then the hat, I'm going to do part of the hat in red, and I haven't cut that out yet. Because I want to do that when I get the gnome made. So you're going to need some stuffing and some kind of fabric or something for your nose. This is a Jet Set Knit Nude from Joann's. Um, some string for the nose. You're going to need some kind of shoes. You can get these kind of shoes. Look online. They're baby shoe party favors. They do have bigger ones. You can get them on Etsy. Um, I think they have them on Amazon also. These are from the Dollar Tree. So every time I go to the Dollar Tree, I look. And if they have them, I buy them. Pipe cleaners for the arms. You're going to need four. These are half inch nuts for the shoes and I've got one shoe already done so my bell rod is a little bigger and I don't know how big it is um, if you're going to use a smaller doll rod you can um, put glue in there and then put it in there and let it dry or just get a smaller nut and I put two nuts in the shoe and I'll kind of show you how I did, I'll tell you how I did this. I did a whole bunch of these, so they were all ready to go. So I have like this one, I don't have it done. And then I put bells on the shoes and some ribbon. And um, I believe that's about it. You can use, if you're gonna do the silver, I was looking at these two, but I maybe would have used more of this one. But I couldn't find the one I had if I probably used it. And it was a white, I think, with snowflakes on it. And that one would look pretty too. But we're going to do this one. So let me get the pattern. And I'm going to go over it with you a little bit. Um, so when you cut out your circles, if you cut it out on the outside, that's fine. Because you're going to end up taking your circle and I'm going to cut one out and then I'll show you but you're going to cut your circle out and I'll show you how I did the middle what to cut that out easy so when we get our circle cut out we're going to fold it in half and we're going to do the little scalloped edge on it okay so either way, if you cut it out on the inside or the outside, doesn't matter because you're going to cut some of that off anyway. And I gave you, I think, I don't know how many different size circles. From a seven and a half down to, I think, like a four or four and a half. Um, the legs, I will probably redo. I don't know if I will do that one. I'll go over that with you when we do the arms and legs. The mittens, I gave you five different sizes. For this one, I used this. And I would, when you cut these out, cut them out so you're cutting out extra fabric. And it was hard to make this longer. I could have really worked at it, but I would just cut it out longer so that you can stuff it inside the arm, okay? And then we're gonna go um, over this when I get to the hat because this is the hat this is the the three layers of the hat and then here's more of the circle so I went all the way down to a three and a half from a seven or a seven and a half seven and a half okay so I give you different options of circles so let's cut out one of the circles and I will show you so I just got to make sure I'm gonna do it I'm going to cut out a red because I need my I need to make sure I have enough of the silver for um, the hat. So you can just cut this out on the outside. That's fine. The inside of the circle is actually the measurement, but you're going to cut that off because we're going to do a scalloped edge. And I made the circle 
in the middle small enough um, so that you are able to cut it bigger if you need to because the foam will stretch a little bit to a point but then it will rip so what I did was because this is not a perfect circle by any means cutting it out by hand so I took and folded it in half up to the light so that I could find that black line and see through and then match it up and if you can't see your black line then you have matched it up so you can kind of look and see and fold it and so that's how I I mean if you're off a little bit it's not going to matter so I'm just going to cut that small one out but we're not going to use this we'll use the ones I've already cut out so now you're going to take so you're going to cut that out and you're going to go over on the back side and I don't know if you'll see my mark um, I just take a pencil and I kind of lay it on its side and run it around if it's not a perfect it doesn't have to be a perfect line because remember we're going to make a scalloped edge but I mean get close you don't want a huge you know lopsided circle and then kind of draw the inside so it looks like that okay and now we're going to cut this out and cut it out on your line and like I said if it's not perfect that's okay because we're going to do a scalloped edge on it and then you're going to fold it in half and I'm going to just trim this up a little bit make sure it's kind of even on both sides so I just take and I start right here let me make sure you guys can see so I'm not too far away I'm kind of far away okay I'm back I just wanted to adjust my camera so we're gonna start we're gonna fold our circle in half and I'm gonna start here at the fold and I'm just gonna make a wavy cut. I'm kind of moving my scissors and I got my foam way back here in my scissors. So when I move my scissors and make that wavy edge, I have an, enough room to keep doing it. And then you can, you can go in and play with this until you've made your circle too small. <laughs> So kind of be careful when you do that, but it doesn't have to be perfect because it, it's, you know, it doesn't. So then we have it like this. So then you're going to fold it in half and my circle is a little off. So I would cut it just a little bit, cut a small circle and um, I'm going to show you what we're going to do when we're going to get to that point. Okay. So to cover, to make, and I've showed this on, I don't remember what video, um, but I'll show you again how to make your pattern for your cone. And you're going to take, if you take your fabric or if you want to make a pattern for a big cone, you're going to have to use probably a newspaper. Um, but what I did and let's see i'll go over here where i've already made some of it we'll see um i get him out of the way i'm gonna do an edge here we'll go over here um nope i gotta keep that edge i would keep this nice edge for your arms okay and your legs so let's go over this side So what I did was I made a mark on my cone and it's not going to matter. It's going to get covered up. And then I would take and lay this with that mark down close to the edge. We're going to end up either folding this over or cutting it off. And then you're just going to have to kind of practice and fold it. So if that mark is right there, I would just roll it 
And if you want to cut it like that, so what I actually did was I took and I rolled it over this way and I just cut it. I have enough room up here, but I'm going to cut it past. So I've got like a half inch extra hanging over from the bottom and then I'm going to roll it and just continue to cut it or you can roll it and mark it. So if you cut it long enough, you'll have enough excess to cut it off. So when we cut it even with the bottom of the um, column. So that's how I did that. Or um, I had another one, if I can find the pattern. I did it, I had it here, I did it with a newspaper, and I don't know what I did with it now, um, but yeah, so you can just, you can take a, if you want to take a pencil and mark it when you roll it, or like I did, I just kind of rolled it up, and then I figured it out, and then I just kind of cut it by hand as I rolled it, okay? So what we're going to first do is take and fold this edge over and hot glue it. And make sure if you have an edge like mine that that is on the inside that it's not showing cuz this is going to be showing on the back side. So I'm just going to kind of trim up my circle here a little bit. And then I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave extra and then we're going to either, we can, we can glue it down, which I'm probably going to do. So I want to make sure, I'm just going to see how much excess, because this is going to be the last part. We're going to glue the raw edge over here first. So you can see that's where I need to cut is beyond that point. So I'm just going to kind of cut straight up. If you have a different way to make this pattern, that's fine. But I could not get this pattern on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So now you're going to take this edge here and you're going to run a bead of glue and you can leave it about a half inch away from that edge. And then take, if you have your mark, line that up. And then just kind of roll it and press that down. And if you want to glue this a little bit, you can. I'm just going to run a bead of glue on the foam. And then roll that, press it as I roll it. And now when we get to where our edge is, now you're going to fold this back and then get pretty close to that edge. I would stay a little bit away from it because when you go to press it, that glue might squeeze out. And then just press that down really good. And now we're just going to take and even this up on the bottom. And then we'll glue um, this down. We'll cut some, we'll make little slits all along the bottom here. So you can just make like one inch, half inch slits. And then I would just put some glue on the tabs of the material. Let me get my glue sticks out of the freezer. And where did I start? Right there. So I put a little bit of glue on some of the tabs first and then press them down. And make sure you kind of press them and pull them in 
and don't cut it down too far so you're cutting in you don't want to cut down into here okay and then we're going to put i think we're just going to put a piece of red felt on the bottom because if we put another piece of material it's just going to have a raw edge so pull that and press it down and then do that all along the whole side because once we get the bottom done and get the rest of the tree on you're not going to see this bottom Okay, and so we're just going to take a piece of red felt. So you could do, if you wanted to do gray or white. And then I'm just going to take some glue and I'm going to put it right on the bottom, close to that edge. And you got to work fast. I've got mine on high temp. And sometimes it would be nice to have a big glue gun, but I don't use it very often. And I have to wait for my glue to melt, kind of. And then we are going to poke our legs through here, but that will be okay. And I kind of forgot about that. So but we'll get those through because we can use our scissors. So just cut the excess off and then trim that around the bottom. Like I said, this is not really gonna be seen. And then if you have to go back in and make sure that all your edges are glued, you can just peel it back and see if it needs any glue. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. And we're gonna work on the shoes so we can get those on and get them put in here and get them dry. And you can cut the top of this off, cut that excess off, because where that's where the hat's gonna go if you wanna put a little bit of glue in there. And press that down and we'll set that aside so we've already done one shoe and so you're gonna need a couple of nuts and I have a bell and I'm trying to find the rest of my material Okay, so you're gonna need, and this will be in the pattern, this is almost a two inch piece. And what I did was I just took, you can take rice, you can put some nuts or washers in here. And then I put glue all the way around the edge and on here. And then I put it on a piece of cardboard and let it, and press it down and let it sit and dry and then cut that excess off, okay? So I will show you really quick if I have a piece of cardboard. Um, okay, so let's say I put rice and stuff in here. And I don't even know if I have any with me right now. I do. So I would just put a little bit of rice in here. You can put rice. I would put something to weight it down, like some um, nuts or washers. And then take your glue and go along that edge. Try not to touch the rice with the glue gun because it will pick it up. So then you're gonna take this and set it on your piece of wood and tip it over and press it down before it starts drying so that it's nice and flat. And then you're going to let that dry 
and cut the excess of the cardboard off. Okay, so for the um, other part of the shoe, so we've cut this off and I got this strip and you're gonna start at the back here. You're gonna put a little bit of glue along the edge and then up the back. And then make sure your edges are nice and straight. And you're gonna line that up and you're gonna line it up even with the bottom of the shoe. And then you're gonna press it in. If any glue squeezes out, just kind of wipe it off. You have to really be careful not to get glue on the glitter if you're gonna use the glitter because it will take your glitter off. So you have to be really careful and mindful of that. And then you're gonna do that all along. If you see some glue squeeze out, Try to wipe it off, but be careful, it might be hot. And then just make sure that it's still even with the bottom of your shoe. And then go all the way around till you meet where you started. And if it's too long, you can cut it shorter. And I'm gonna trim a little bit off even though I put glue on already. And then press that down. And just make sure that it's really dry. And I think I'm gonna trim a little bit. I think this one is a little longer than the other one. Pretty close, it's not. I'm not gonna trim a lot. So I would do these both at the same time so you can make sure that these are even. And then we're gonna take, you're gonna put glue down here in the front on the shoe and you're gonna press that down until that dries. And then you can take in these two little pockets, put some glue there, and then right here. And you're gonna squeeze those together. And I would get a clip and clip it and let it dry. And while that's drying, we can take and put one of our nuts in the shoe. And these are half inch. And I'm not sure what size the dull rod is, if it's um, 5 eighths or 7 sixteenths, I can't remember. And then once you get that glue in there and then put some, put your nut in, then I put more glue on top of that nut and even in the middle of it. And then you're going to get your dull rod. And you're not going to need a very long piece for the leg. So you're going to take and sharpen your dull rod. And the sharpener that I use, it has a small hole and a big hole for sharpening. It's actually made for makeup and it's a wet wild. I probably had it for years, but it works really well to sharpen your dull rod. So you can get it into your styrofoam easier. So then you're going to take and you're going to leave about a half inch or so to go into the nut. And we're going to glue one edge and fold that over and press it down. And then you're going to take so you can, and you can leave it a little bit, you know, like an inch or so, because this has got to go in the shoe and we have to be able to screw it in that nut without that fabric. So then on the edge that we didn't fold, put your glue 
and then put your dowel rod and then you can roll it nice and tight and then when you come to that other edge put your glue on there roll it and then press it down and if any glue squeezes out try to wipe it off because I can usually wipe mine off and then it'll just come off and then the seam is going to go in the back so now we're going to screw this in and now we're going to take we can probably take our clip off now you're going to put glue in side on top of that nut that we already put in and you're going to put this dowel rod but make sure this seam is in the back and press that down and then put glue around that nut because if you use this one as a half inch nut you should have room and then on top of it also and around the dowel rod so just make sure that it's up straight okay and if they're both not the same size like mine aren't that's fine because they're going to get put into the styrofoam cone and we'll make sure that they're even when we put them in. So now you can take around the rest of that um, inside of the foam, just kind of squeeze that together and in the back here and we're just going to pinch that and squeeze it around the shoe and then we're going to put this piece here to cover that up and then we're going to put the trim on the bottom and then we have to put a piece of foam on the bottom so when you cut your tr your circles out um, you're going to save your scrap pieces because they're going to be good for the bottom of your shoes um, if you need little pieces and I'll show you in a minute so I have I had a bigger piece for my top of my shoe. And you think you can find it? No. No, I don't. This, yeah, there it is, this one. So now we're going to take and take a piece of your foam. And I'm going to do the glitter side down. We're going to take and put glue around that edge. And don't go too close because it'll squeeze out. And all the way in the middle of the shoe and then put that on the foam and press it down and even if it does squeeze oh we're gonna we're gonna cut it off and we're gonna trim it with this piece here okay so now what I'm gonna do because I have this huge piece sticking up I'm gonna cut that off and if I need to glue it, I will. And then what I'm going to do is cut a very tiny little piece. And I'm going to glue and cover that up. And if you have to use tweezers, you can use tweezers to get this on here. But if you cut it long enough, then you can cut it off. So I'm going to do that. And I have a tiny, tiny bit right here in the front, so I'm going to cut it. And then we're going to cut this part off on the bottom. This you want to make sure you kind of get this nice. Don't go to get too carried away. Make sure when you're cutting, your scissors are up and down. Don't angle it like this, or you will cut too far into the bottom. Okay? So you can cut some off, and then take... I'm going to use my smaller scissors and then cut that excess off and then we are going to put that red trim around. Oh, 
Okay. Clean up my mess. So then you're going to start in the back of the shoe. You're going to take your trim and I got fur and put a little bit of glue on that trim and it will probably squeeze out and you're going to make sure you cover that edge, the bottom edge of the shoe with that sole that we just put on and then I fold it back and then I put the glue on the piece. And you don't need a whole lot. You don't get, if you get too gobby, it's going to squeeze out. But you have to be very mindful that you're covering this white here, the sole that we just put on. And then press that on or down. And mine moved a little bit. Another glue stick. And be careful you're where you're picking, hanging on to your strip so you don't put your finger in the glue. And then cut that excess if you can cut it as close to the other piece. And be careful of your glue. I'm getting glue on the side. And now we're going to take this piece and we're going to glue it to around the ankle. Right around here. And then you're going to have to put some glue on this piece also. And it's not going to be perfect, but we can get it as close as going around as we can. Because you want to make sure you overlap the... The, the top of the shoe and onto like his leg. And then cut, if you have excess, cut that off. And then hold that if you have to. I get a big gob of glue right there. Mine is kind of messed up here in the back. And I'm trying to fix it. I don't know, this glue lately has gotten to be all over, even when I stick it in the freezer. Okay, so there's that. Let me get rid of all this glue pieces. And I'm going to show you how to make that cute little bow that I made. It's got the three pieces on it. And... You're going to need some embellishments, if I can find them. So I just took my ribbon, and let me make sure you guys aren't too close. So you're just going to take and make a bow. And pull it nice and tight. And then get it... The size you want it. You can leave it a little longer because you're probably going to trim it. That's what I did. So make it a bigger bow than you think you're going to need. Then you're going to take and cut your excess. And make sure your tails are the same. Okay. And I'm going to probably get you closer again. I know I keep doing this to you guys. 
And now you're going to take and cut your loop of your bow. And then you have the three pieces. And then I kind of angled the outer ones. The middle one is straight. They have to make sure I get it the same size. I would just take my lighter and just, you don't even have to get really close. Just enough to melt the edges so it doesn't fray. And then I glue it on his shoe. And then I try to make sure I get them in the same spot and glue it on where we had that little piece. And then I have a little bell. I'm going to put it right in the front in this little pocket. And you have to make sure you get it the right way and get enough glue in there. And I'm going to squeeze just a little bit more. And there's his two legs. So we're going to let that dry for just a bit. And now we're going to get the tree, but we're, I'm just going to kind of, um, if I can find it. <laughs> um, so I need all my pieces to my tree. I should have five. I should have five. And I only got four. Nope, oh, I had to use my other one. Okay, so this one's going to be my first one. And evidently I have to, because it'll rip, but I have to get it down here, so I have to cut that hole bigger. And hopefully I didn't um, cut these too small. You can always cut the hole bigger and just kind of test it out to see if you have to go smaller. If you think it's going to rip, um, you want to cut it smaller. So I think I'm going to cut it a little smaller. I'm just going to fold it in half and take a little bit more. we want it kind of snug and I didn't glue mine on so if you see it starting to rip you want to take it off I mean you're gonna be able to cover it by the other one and you're gonna go almost all the way down to the bottom okay so so far mine is not ripping so that's what we need. And then we're going to do the next size. So these are about a half inch smaller and I have fur on them. And I know I'm going to need this next one, the middle side, the middle of the hole bigger. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. And then I'm just going to try and put it on. And I'm going to take a little bit more because I don't want it to rip. So that's why I buy extra. If I buy extra foam or felt, even material, you know, they say to buy like an extra quarter, half yard. And then just slowly bring that down and make sure your seam is in the back. So if you have to, if you don't glue these, you're able to move it. Um, so that if you have a nice part of the, of these, this circle that you like, and you're going to bring it almost down right on top of each other. Not quite, but pretty close. Okay. And then we're going to do the next size. And I'm going to cut my middle size a little bigger.
and your felt will stretch also. I think I'm pushing myself on this one, but if you be really careful. Oh, that's looking cute. I love it. So you could do this in any color, you guys. You could do, if you wanted a pink tree, you could do pink tree. You could do blue. You could do the green. And if you get one circle and it looks a little bigger in some spot, you can just cut that little scallop off and make it a little smaller. Like this spot right here, maybe a little big. But I mean, it just is preference. And then just pull those down. And I did, like I said, I didn't glue my other ones. And now we have this one and we're gonna have to cut this hole. And I have no idea what how long I've been I'm on for time. Okay, I'm gonna cut that a little bigger yet. And then he's gonna have arms. That looks pretty good. So if you're gonna make a smaller one, your circles are gonna be a half inch from the bottom. They're gonna get a half inch smaller to the top, okay? I'm at 47 minutes already. Uh, okay, so um, let's get his legs in and then we can let that dry and we'll work on his arms. So we're gonna want his legs in the middle and his feet have gotta go forward. Seam is in the back. So I'm just gonna take and poke a hole with my scissors and turn it. And I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna see where this first one is gonna go in comparison to the second one. So probably, yeah. And then you're going to take seam in the back and put the dough, put it in there. We're going to test it out first before we put our glue in. And you're going to press it down. You're going to try to be careful, but we got to try to cover because I got one dough row that's longer than the other. He's kind of, his legs are a little. Okay, I'm gonna take a break and get his feet even. Okay, so I'm back. So now we're gonna put the glue in and get yourself a glue stick ready. Put it in the hole until you hear it or kind of see it bubbling out. And try not to get glue on the bottom of the felt. Now we're going to get our legs and you're going to put those in and make sure that the seam is going to the back. And then get your feet positioned where you want them. If you want them pointing out, 
then do that now. Okay, and we're gonna let that dry. And now we're gonna work on his arms. And his mitts, this is gonna be a long video. So I have one done already. I'm gonna show you a very easy way to do the mitts. And I use the small one for, um, in the pattern, okay? And then we're gonna need our nose, we're gonna need our hands. So you're going to take, and you're gonna cut out your pattern. I thought I had it here. So you can do it two ways when you cut out your pattern. You can, you wanna do it, because I wanna show you guys. So you can get, there is a right and a wrong side, but if you don't get it, the right side out doesn't matter. So you're gonna put two of them together and you're gonna cut this together. So you can either, and like I said, you can make this part longer, okay? Because we gotta have enough to stuff in the arm. So you can either do this with a pencil, is hold on there and lightly trace around because you're gonna cut on that pencil line. And I can barely see it or you can leave it on there and cut around the mitten. And then I would come over here and cut this. And then when I come to this V by the, the thumb, I would cut in by the thumb and then by the hand part there and then cut that out and then we can take that off and then just round that thumb and then even up the top of your mitt so it's nice and even and now what you're going to do and let me get you close so you can see this we got to get him out of the way over here. So we're going to take, and you're going to put hot glue, and I should have used a different color. You're going to put hot glue on the edge of your mitt. Even in the thumb, don't worry about closing up the thumb. If you get it all in the thumb, that's okay. Leave the bottom of it open. Make sure you have glue all along that outside of that mitten. You're going to take and you're going to put the other one on top of it, line it up very carefully so everything is lined and you're going to take and pinch, kind of pinch these edges together on the outside. All along the edge and I just kind of went over this like about three times kept pinching, made sure everything was closed up and glued. So it kind of, when you got the glue and you pinch it together, it kind of seals that edge by pinching it. Okay, so it looks just like that. So that is a very easy, easy mitten. So like I said, buy extra felt, whatever, so that you have if you make a mistake. So now you're going to take your arm, and I know I'm going to say it, I know this is long video, and you're going to hem up one side, and I have a nice finished edge for my um, wrist, because my fabric had a nice edge. And I don't have my seam here, it's not very good. And then fold that over so you have a nice straight edge. And press that down, make sure you get this glued down by the wrist. 
And then you're gonna take you're gonna take two pipe cleaners. You're going to fold them in half and you're going to twist them from the, the um, ends here down to where it's a little loop, okay? And then you're going to take and put this in your mitten. You're probably going to have to squeeze that together. So that's why we have to leave this open so his hand will be a little bendable but not his thumb. So you're going to put that in there. Put a little bit of glue, squeeze that together, and now you're going to make sure you get both of your mittens the same. So they have to be going opposite. My, my seam is right here, and you're just going to put some glue by the wrist, and you want to make sure that they're going to be the same length. And then on here, and then bring this edge up, this raw edge, right there. And you can you can finger press that. And then put a bead of glue. So if you hold it down here by where my finger is right here, and then bring this edge over. And press that together however you want to glue that together whatever works for you and then press it really good and then check your seam and make sure that all of this is glued and mine is okay and um, we have to cut the hat or we have the hat to do, but I have to get his arm. I have to get his nose. Let's do his nose. And I have one made. I will link the video below. I was going to try to make it, but I do have a video below. So you can use a wooden ball, whatever you want to use. I'm just going to tie some thread around here because mine is not long enough. I was going to try to make a short video, you guys, but <laughs> I guess not. So even though I've already cut this, I'm still going to try to tie this thread on here. And get it in a knot. So yeah, you can do... I have a video on how to do different noses. So I will link that below. And then we're going to take and put this on right about there because his beard is going to come down here and his hat's going to be up here. So you're not going to see this thread. And I'm going to wrap it around the back. And you're just going to tighten it and you might have to hold it with your finger and then leave you can leave about a half inch or so of the thread and then we're going to get his beard when you cut the beard you're going to cut just the backing And I like to cut it, not to a total point, but kind of take the um, corners off on the bottom. And then we're just going to take and make a little U shape that this is going to go under his nose. And then take that fur and peel that off. And then check and make sure, I have to make sure you guys can see because of the camera, make sure that it's not too long because you don't want it going all the way down and covering up his. Tree. So then we're gonna glue this on the U shape here. I'm running out of glue again. And 
and then pull his nose up and make sure that those gathers kind of stay under the nose or under the beard and then glue these tabs up and I like to pull them up right around the nose and if you want to put some glue right on the nose and that will get glued to the cone then you can do that make sure his beard stays out of the way okay so we're going to let that dry and we're going to work on the hat we have the arms we will have to glue those on before we put the hat on So let me take a break and get my pattern and figure out my hat and I will be back. Okay, I'm back. So what we're gonna do first is I'm cutting a strip um, and it's about an inch wide. I did probably an inch and a quarter and then I did a scallop on the edge and I'm just gonna glue it around this top one to kind of hide that edge from the tree. Um, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. I just Kind of thought it might finish it off. And then so you want to try to bring it around and it's kind of hard because the foam, uh, the cone, the way it tapers. And then if you can get enough glue in there, then you can just press that foam down and then it'll just be glued to the cone. If that made sense. <laughs> okay, so what I did um before i'm going to put his arms on is i need to cut part of this top of this hat off that's on the pattern so i need to adjust that so i would just take the pattern cut it out and then wrap it around because we're going to have it covering his nose we're going to do a scalloped edge again and i just took a couple of pins and poked it in to see how it fit and I'm not sure if I'm going to do this or not. I'll see when I get to it. Is I took another piece and it will get layered and that will get scalloped. And then we're going to have the very top of the hat, which might still be too big. And that's going to be scalloped. So I'll see if I'm going to do this one. So that's how I am going to do that. So now we're just going to take and glue this back seam. And you have to make sure when you pin it, if you're going to try it on there, how um, much you're going to um, overlap these edges. So what you can do is pin the hat like this is how I did it on the other one. And then you can try it on him and see if that fits. And then I would like round this down here, but we're gonna cut that, um, we're gonna scallop these. So I would trim that off and then just go around. I'm gonna start in the front on the side. And just be careful how much you take off. You don't want to make your hat too small. And then we're just going to take, and you can take like one of the pins out, or if you want to pin it further over and then fold this edge back and get some glue on there and then press it down and then do that to the other one you can just lift the other one out so try to keep your back of your hat in place so 
so you don't um, make it too small. And you can take that pin out and I would just press that down really good. Make sure you have it all glued down. And now we're going to put it on. We're going to test it out. And this we could probably cut off a little bit, but we need this long enough so it goes around his hat, his head. So now we're going to take and put his arms on. And I'm going to have the seam is going to go in. And I don't want them too long. I think I'm going to go right about there. So I'm going to glue it right up. I'm just going to hold on to it and put glue on the whole top of that arm. And then glue that down. So we just want, we don't want his, long, his arms really long. And then you're going to want to make sure you get him the same length. Now we're going to do the same thing to this arm. And then just make sure you don't get glue on his beard. And then we're going to glue the sides of the arms a little bit more down farther. And then we're going to take this, put his hat on. He looks like a Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> Okay, so I gotta see what it looks like. You know what I did? And I don't think I used felt for the hat for the other one. But I don't have glitter felt. Hmm. I'm gonna take a break and figure this out. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I have his I decided to do his hat in red. I like using the felt better. So like on this one, I did the glue, green glitter for the bottom of the tree. And then I did a green felt that matched. But of course, I, there's not that I know of. I don't have it is a glitter felt. If there is, I don't have it. So I'm going to do it in red, silver, and then the top of the hat in red. So you're just going to do your hat. The bottom, like I showed you, is you're going to take your pattern and fold it around the head and see where you need to glue it. You want it to come over his nose a little bit. Pin it. And then cut your scalloped edge and then glue it together. And then I took the middle piece of the hat and cut it in silver and glued that on. And now we're going to glue this part of his hat on. And then we'll do the top part. So I'm just going to fold this up. And I put the glue on the hat. And make sure the seam is going down the middle of the back. And then I do the front of the nose. Try to keep his beard out of the way. And you can put a little bit on his nose. Be careful where you're putting the glue. And then glue the sides, so make sure his beard's out of the way. And 
and press that down and then do the other side I'm just trying to get all of his beard out of the way And this part that I have on, I'm just going to put some glue on the inside of that in a few spots. And then you're going to take your other piece and you might have to make it a little bit bigger. Like I said, make it bigger than you need to. And we're going to take and fold this in half from this point of the hat down. And then we're gonna run a bead of glue. I'm gonna tack it in the middle first, just so I can get started. You're not gonna have, depends on if you make this a little larger, how much room you'll have to work with folding these two seams together. and then press that down and then finish down the bottom. And I got a little bit of glue on my hat, so I gotta try to trim that off without cutting a hole in it. And now we're gonna cut a little bit of a scalloped edge again. I don't want to cut too much off of here. And then we're going to try this on. We're going to cut this part off a little bit here. Cut a little bit more off there and his hat here. We don't want it to overlap the silver all the way. And my silver probably could have come down a lot further. But that's the way it is because I don't want a two hour video. So I'm just going to glue this around the edge. Put some glue underneath there. And then press it down. And then the star I had. And you can decorate your tree if you'd like. You can use, um, if you want to put any of those kind of beads on, if you have, um, like I have these red rhinestones. You could put those on and I will probably do some of that and then you'll see it in the end of the video and the beginning. So I'm going to take a yellow or a red star and glue it to a silver 
wooden one that I had and then I'm going to put that on the top of the tree I'm back I finished I did the hat we glued the star on and I just added some of the beads I had this little wired um, uh, I don't know what you want to call it trim or whatever garland and I got that at the Dollar Tree so I just glued that to their hands and then I put them I didn't glue them on this plaque and I get these plaques from the Dollar Tree this one I stained and I just glued everything on to this so I just had a couple pieces of greenery I tucked it of, of the pine boughs some little presents a little some trees I had just put some stuff in there glued a present to their hands and glued all this to their hands also so I think they turned out really cute you let me know which one's your favorite if you like the green one or if you like the silver one so thank you guys for joining me today if you haven't subscribed to my channel I would love for you to be a part of my crafting community and click on the subscribe button and then when you click on the bell that will notify you each time I upload a new video you must have your settings your notifications turned on in your settings for that to work if you already have subscribed thank you for joining subscribing being a part of my crafting community I love you guys and I will see you in the next video bye bye